What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. We are the 19th of March and today we're having a look on how to create a shop. This includes a couple of things. This includes how you're going to be doing your UI to have a nice uh, scroll rack that actually works just like this. This is also going to take you through creating your own scriptable object so you can have your data stored right in here as a object form. So as you can see over here, I have a couple of, um, of uh, prefab that I used to show you the scroll rack. What we have right here is two real objects that they're being spun right here through these scriptable objects. So I'm going to take you through that. And then finally, you're also going to have dynamic on click, which means if you click on it, this is the Shiba hat. And if you click on that, this is a Shiba arm. And it knows because we have a function that is uh, created dynamically, those buttons, they do not exist usually. So as you can see over here, our shop is empty during the editor. And then once you press on play, you populate that shop with whatever you want to populate it with. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so just like we did yesterday, we're gonna have a look at exactly how our scene is set up. And that's gonna be very important for this tutorial, guys. You're gonna to need to know how this scene is set up because we're gonna be using a scroll rec and this thing has to stay within bounds, which is a, it's kind of a hard thing to figure out. So make sure you have a good look at the UI and how I work this out. We have the same exact start menu. And in fact, um, this is going to be part of the start menu package. So you can go download that directly from yesterday or from today's video and that will be all included. So we have the same exact setup. I have the trees in the background that don't have anything to do with the UI. And here I have my shop. I'm not gonna be looking at main, so I'm not looking on this left hand side. I'm only looking at shop today. So I'll collapse this one and we're gonna have a look over here. So what do we have over here? We have our back button at the top, which is just, you know, it's there to interact, make us go back to this menu. So we don't really need to open this one today but we have the shop object. Now this one, I made sure to uh, give it a specific size. So if you see the, um, the rectangle over here, that's actually the size where I wanna put my whole shop. And here it is defined with a color. At the top over here, we just have a little bit of customization. This is not required. Where it starts being required is down here. So my mask, this is the only thing that matters. Um, well, this is where it starts mattering basically. So I have an object, which is just a normal image. I give it a little bit of margin, as you can see. So there's a margin. Um, since I don't have a background, you don't see it in the game, but it does have a small margin. I have a image with very low opacity over here. You can put it at the top. You can, it just look better for me if I put a low opacity. Um, and then what is the most important? I have a scroll erect object. And we'll get back to this one because it is pointing towards the object just beneath it. So what is that object shop container? It's an object that has a anchor that just matches everything. As you can see, it's just like it matches the whole thing. And then on top of it, it has a content size fitter. That is gonna be very important. I'll show you exactly why. Um, and if you go back on the mask, you're going to see that the content of our scroll rec is actually the shop container. So I went right here, drag and drop my shop container inside of content. I also made sure that um, there is no horizontal scrolling. Now, what is that scroll rec? Well, scroll rec allows you to scroll through multiple elements. And let me show you that in a second. So I'm going to create a couple of elements, duplicate that quite a bit. And if I go inside of the game, I head over to my shop. This is what a scroll rec allows you to do. So you can go up, you can go down, you can go pretty much um, any direction you want. Even if we go back right here on our mask, we enable horizontal. You can see that we can scroll now on horizontal as well. And it goes back to the center if we're beyond a certain point. If we just scroll in the middle, it stays there. Why does that work? Why is it that everything works like perfectly fine? Um, it's because we have the perfect combination of scroll rect on this object. On the shop container, we have a content size fitter. And then um, all my object, all my children's are being placed by a grid layout group in which I gave some value on the right hand side over here. So that means if I just delete some, they're going to be reordered properly. And as you can see, we only have that now. So um, we pretty much went through the whole UI except the shop item. So let me actually show you that real quick. When you're going to be making your shop item, you're going to be the one that knows exactly what should go in it. Now here is mine. So you can have a small preview of what I'm doing. Um, and you know, you can add text, you can add a cost, you can add a lot of things. I encourage you to do that right here. 
Let me show you mine though. It is a simple shop item. On the top level, the container object, I have an image, which is my background image. There is also a button. That button is going to be important because you need to be able to click on these things. Um, beneath it, I have a border. That's the children. Not really playing around with that. Just wanted to have like a little bit more style to it. And in the middle, you have the sprite. Okay. Once you do have an object like that, I encourage you to take it and save it as a prefab, which I've done down here. And that's going to be very important because once you have that prefab, we're getting rid of that object. This is being spawned dynamically depending on, on your shop items. Okay. So we have what we need to some extent. Now we need to start coding a little bit. We need to populate our shop with all the items we, we want to see in there. And um, we need to be able to click on them. We're going to start by creating a script called shop item. Now my shop item is a very, very lengthy script of zero line right now. Let me go ahead and paste in something. So here's what we'll be doing. We will be creating a scriptable object. Over here at the top, I'm using Unity Engine, and then I create myself a, um, well, we, we are going in the Create Asset menu, which means when we open the Asset menu, the Create Asset menu, we'll have the chance to create a scriptable object of type Shop Item. What is inside of a Shop Item? Well, we could use item name, like I've mentioned earlier. We could use a sprite, a cost, and a background color, in my case. Um, actually, that's not true. In my case, I'm only using two things today. So I'm only using the sprite and the background color. That's the only thing I'll change, but I encourage you to put more stuff if you want. In fact, you know what? I'll help you out. We'll do an item as well. So we'll do item name. Yeah, I'll keep that one for, me, for myself today. So um, that would mean really quickly, I go back on my shop item. I'm going to put it back in the shop container so I can have a good look at it. And somewhere around here, we'll create a new text object. So say text mesh pro, call it name, and I'm going to anchor it at the top. So there you go. We now have a name of type text mesh pro UGY. I'm going to make sure I override my prefab. And now it's part of my prefab. Every time I instantiate this object, it's going to have a name, as you can see. Okay. Um, going back in our code, now that we've added this small thing, we have the shop item. This is a scriptable object. I don't want to get too far deep into scriptable object. I, I know that Brackies has a very good video tutorial on that. You can check it out if you want. But today it will allow us to have a list of items that we can create directly in our project folder. We'll do that in a second um, without, say, using a CSV or going through a database. Um, we can just go right here under shop. And if you guys remember, we have now something in the asset create asset menu under shop, shop item, and it creates a new object like that. Um, let's call it the Shiba hat. We're going to sell hats in our store. Why not? Item name, um, Shiba hat. The sprite is just going to be the head. And the background color, we could say, hey, it's going to be a small green like this. Why not? And um, just to give more than one example, I'll go ahead and I'll create another one real quick. Shiba arm. And... <laughs> I'm just going by the assets I have, so we're just gonna we're gonna sell an arm. Why not? Uh, obviously, this does not have any any real use in our game, but hey, there it is. And the arm is gonna be a yellow thing. Why not? Oh, I forgot. I have to up the um, transparency over here, so that's done. Okay, so we got two objects. As you can see, they're within my project folder, and they have different properties. If you check on the right hand side of the screen, now we have to take those put them into a script and have them instantiated. Well, this is where we create a last new script that we're going to call shop. So I have it created over here. I drag it right on top of my object and nope, nope, it's not going to work. I can't drag it because there is nothing in it. So I'm going to open up a new script called shop and we will start defining a couple of things. At the very top, I wanna to have a public class called shop it's going to be a model behavior because I'll be dropping it on top of my object. If you're using mono, you'll need to include Unity Engine. And now it's time for us to declare a couple of fields. We are going to start with a list of items that we currently sell in our shop. Now the list of item is type of shop item, which is the scriptable object we've just created. So that's quite, quite cool. We can use this as a type and create an array out of it. Okay. 
Then we'll need two set of reference. We'll need references for the shop container. Where are we spawning these things? And also what are we spawning? So what is the prefab we are spawning? All of these things we can drag and drop in the inspector quite easily. Next up, we are going to start the game and populate our shop. What do I mean by populate our shop? Well, I mean, it's time to actually go through a list of items that we have to create. So these at the top over here and actually create them. So how do we go about creating these items, knowing that these are type of scriptable object and they have a couple of you know properties inside of them? Well, we do it as we do with all the other game objects. So we go and instantiate this thing. So game object, instantiate. We instantiate the prefab that has nothing on it right now. Well, it has the base data on it, the base values. And we instantiate it inside of the shop container. So this second field over here is the transform of the parent. So as you can see here, transform parent. When we create our object, it's gonna go beneath the shop container. And by default, if you guys remember, our shop container has a grid layout, which means if you just put the children in here, it's going to be placed properly in a grid manner. So the square manner that we saw earlier. All right, so I feel like that this is a good moment to take a small break and show you guys how it would work in a game and also take time to set up our store. Um, here is what I'll do before we start defining things a little bit more on a personal item level, you could say. I'm gonna go under shop, add my, my new script. So the script was called shop. We're going to set the references. So the shop container is the very last object. The shop item prefab is what we had over here under prefab. We want to sell a total of two items, so the Shiba hat and the arms as well. Here they are. So it has all the information it needs at the moment for us to have our shop. Let's go ahead and what do we need to do next? Well, nothing right now. I just want to show you what happens. So when we start, populate shop is being called and we end up having this. Well, I mean, well, first, <laughs> scaling is a bit wrong, but that's totally fine. Um, we have two items, they're not being changed, there is no new background color, there is no change of the name, you know, it's missing a lot of things. Um, but as you can see, since we have two items, it created two and it's, you know, it's working quite fine actually, it's it's placing itself uh, properly. If we were to duplicate more or have more items, it would look something like this and you'd be able to scroll down and it still works quite good. By the way, if you don't like having a mask, you can also remove it. Um, but be aware that it's gonna to go to the top here as well. So think about that before you do any drastic move. Um, yeah, so we have this, we create an object for every single one of the of the shop items, but then we don't change anything inside of that object. This is like a placeholder that we need to change. So let's go ahead and grab information about that shop item. I'm gonna quickly declare just above that, or it could be below, doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab a reference to the current shop item that we are creating. And now at this point, this is where we access the prefabs component and change it based off your item structure. So what is our item right now? It's a shop item. That's the main object. It has image. It has a button on top of it. As a children, it has a border. Border is just type of image as sprite and sprite is just type of image. And then recently we also have a name, which is a text mesh pro UGUI. Okay, well, we know that this is our object. This is what we spawn. Well, let's go ahead and change a couple of things, starting with the background color. How do we change background color? Well, we know it's the top level item. We get a component type of image. If you don't have that, make sure you include unityengine.ui. Here it is. We grab its color and we change it by the shop item background color. Okay, so that's the color. We can now change the sprite. How do we change the sprite knowing it's a children? Well, we take the same exact top level object, we get its transform, get the second child. Okay, so that's very important here. You would think that it starts at index zero, but it doesn't, which is very confusing for me as well. Um, so if you want to have the sprite in this case, that's object one and that's object two. That's not object zero and that's not object one. It doesn't work like that. Get child uh, doesn't have the, it doesn't start at zero basically. And then what I do is I get the component type of image, grab its sprite component, and then we change the sprite. So if we were to change a name, it's exactly the same thing. We'd grab child number three, we'd say we want to have the text mesh pro 
U G Y. I think it's written like that. Yep, I got it right. Of course, you'll need to include TMB Pro. And we are going to change the text for name or item name in this case. And we're good. So change the item name. And just like that, we should have everything we need visually. Let's press and play. Oh, and we get a no reference. Why is that? All right, so something quite weird just happened and I, I don't know why it works now, but I've lowered that down to um, by, by one basically. So now this is index zero, one, and two. I've just had a very long speech saying that it's not made that way, but apparently now it works if I do it this way. Um, which is very, very odd because in my previous code, I have the exact same setup and I was using get child two and that did work. So <laughs> I'm not sure what to tell you guys. Okay. But it does work properly right now. If I assume that get child is zero base. So the index zero is border, which is never being changed by the way. Um, so yeah, here it is. I have background color. I have different sprites. You can see them over here. Of course, the name edition was a little bit odd because we really don't see much um, with that size, but here they are. And that is not it. That's not it. Actually, we are, we're going to go a little bit further than that. We are going to connect a function to our button. So you guys, when you click on stuff, you know, you have something you can actually um, have an action on right now. What we have is a bunch of visual, but you don't have any action. And I know you guys, if you want to do the shop, you're going to need to have like an endpoint. And um, the problem right now is that you cannot go directly on every single one of these buttons because you know, these are buttons. You can't go right here and say, Hey, add a, you know, add a menu container that set active off something like that. You can't do that. Why? Well, for the simple reason that you don't have these buttons when the game start, <laughs> you, you can't just manually go in there and do it. So you'll need to do it dynamically. How do we do it dynamically? Well, we know where our button is. So it's right here on our first object our, our top layer object. So we're going to go grab it. That's the first thing. So we're going to grab a button. We're going to assign a function to its on click event. How do we grab the button? Well, item object, get component type of button in this case. And we have a function called on click, which is the event. And then here is what we have to do. We add a listener and you're going to create a Lambda function going right into say, um, on button click which is something you'll declare yourself. So if we go down here, we declare that function, uh, we can make it private. So private void on button click like so. And then we'll also need something else. We'll also need to know, say, what is the index of the button we click or even better in this case, let's just grab the shop item. So item now it's going to be very important for us to define it directly here at the top. Oh, and oh yeah, this one right here is called SI. And just like this, we've just hooked in our button to this thing. So if we go down here, say debug.log item that item name, I think it's going to work right now. I have not tested this out um, right away. The problem I see might be happening is that we have the same name for both object. So let's try it out. Oops. This is Shiba hat and this is Shiba arm. No, it actually works just fine because we are redeclaring things. We're not reusing a, a old value. Okay. Well, guys, that's actually it. <laughs> I was not expecting that to end that easily. Um, but we have a nice little shop over here. You have a couple of things you can customize. Hopefully this video took you through a couple of steps on how you can customize it to make it look like your own shop. Of course, I do appreciate any feedback. Oh, and before I end this, I want to show you guys something. There is somebody that did take the tutorial today, um, the ceremony tutorial and actually did something with it. And he made a small video for us to look at on Discord. So here is his, which I thought was pretty cool. And, and I enjoyed that quite a lot. So if you guys have any progress you want to show, you can always come in um, the Discord and show it to us. I thought it was really, really interesting. So that's where I'll be ending today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, check out Patreon, check out the Discord. Um, yeah. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.